Welcome back to Agenda. I'm Paul Cook from 680 News. Right now in the Western world, life seems to be getting faster and faster. At work, we're asked to do more tasks with fewer resources, and our job descriptions are becoming more complicated. My next guest says the decisions we make have far-ranging or long-term consequences in many cases, yet we are asked to make them in a hurry. It's an approach he calls thinking for results and is described as a set of tools and strategies which allow participants to understand and improve their thinking processes. He says it combines scientific procedures with knowledge of how people think to create powerful strategies to use every day. Joining me in studio to tell us about it is Randy Parks, a motivational speaker and the author of Thinking for Results, Success Strategies. Welcome to Agenda. Thanks for having me, Paul. Okay, so help us out here. What exactly are we talking about and how can you make us more effective? Well, I think that most people can improve their thinking abilities and, and their use of their thinking skills really in two ways. One is by thinking more and the other is by thinking better. So by thinking better, what I mean is being more aware of how our brain works and how it is that we actually make decisions. When you say, uh, I, I think I, I, you wrote something about the fact that even smart people don't think that well. Right. You know, that, that's, that, that's, oh, okay, so they don't? <laughs> well, I think what happens is that, that uh, in our brain, there's a lot of unconscious processing that goes on. These days, as you said, we're, we're encountering so much information that we can't possibly consciously process it all. I think a lot of us would admit we, we suffer from information overload, for sure. For sure. So what happens is a part of our brain blocks out some of that information. And the example in terms of smart people is where they get stuck on simple little problems because they've made a little assumption. And that assumption filters all the rest of their logical thinking. Okay, we're going to put up some graphs now that are going to, uh, I guess, give an idea of what you're talking about here on the monitor. So Right. Now, yeah. let me give you your, your uh, fancy oh, uh, glasses here so okay. that, that you can see what they're seeing. Right. So what happens is, in this information, with, with information overload, we're, we're bombarded by all of this information all the time. We can't possibly process it. So what our brain does is it has a filtering effect. And what you can see with the graphic here is you can't really make out all of this information. But with the next one, what, what we'll see is the filter coming in. Now, in this case, it's a blue filter like the one that you have. Right. It clears up a lot of that extraneous information. Okay. So that you can now see much clearer. You mm -hmm. can process this amount of information. Now, on the other hand, what happens is that your blue filter is also blocking out some of the information, mm -hmm. which means that sometimes it blocks out important information. Shall I keep these? I mean, this is a good look for me. I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> now, you see, if I put on my red glasses, then what happens <laughs> is when we look at the, the next slide, the, the red glasses will filter out and block out the blue information. So what happens is that I see different things than you do, even though we're looking at the same situation. Okay. Now, the advantage of having two of us who have different filters is that together we can see more of the picture. Okay. You see the blue information, I see the red information. And if we can work together, then we can get a clearer picture of the situation. Of course, who is it that we like to hang out with? like-minded people. Exactly, people who have the same filters. <laughs> so we see the, the information and we agree. Yeah, no, but, but anybody who, who really, I, I guess, aspires to, to, to achieve something, know, you, you know that you gotta, you gotta have the dissenting opinions, right? Right. I mean, yeah, you have to have the dissenting opinions if you're gonna see the, the complete situation. But on the other hand, it's, it's a lot harder to, to work with these other people. And, and it's not just individuals who have these filters, corporations have these filters, societies have these filters, we call them cultures. And again, it, it tends to block out some of the information. And now these filters are essential, otherwise we experience information overload. The danger comes when we're just not aware that we're doing this filtering. And so we miss out something important. And it ranges from a simple example of getting stuck on a little problem, where I was talking about brilliant people, sure. uh, versus societies that have a collective filter that, that leads to one sort of conclusion or another. Now, you're an avid sailor. 
Yeah. And uh, you, you've sailed from, what, Hawaii to Vancouver or yep. something like that? Yep. And, and it strikes me that, you know, that's something that isn't very easy to do. I mean, you've got to be fairly quick. You've got to have a right. pretty decent, pretty good mind to be able to do something like that, right? And you've got to make some split-second decisions and that sort of thing. Exactly. How do you incorporate this philosophy into that? That's, that actually is one of the key pieces of our filter. You know, uh, not so much these days, but a few years ago, there was a lot of talk about trusting your gut, mm -hmm. using your intuition. And that type of decision is really what our filter does. It sees the information, quickly blocks out extraneous information, and then comes to a conclusion. And I realized when, when racing sailboats that I had to do that. But what happens is you get the expert sailors and you ask them, why did you turn at this particular point? And they say, well, it just felt right. Mm -hmm. You know, I trusted my gut. But if an amateur tries to do that, they haven't built up that experience so they try trusting their gut, they make the wrong decision just because they don't have that, that base of filters experience. You hear people say things like, I, I, I'm so busy I can't even think right now. What's your solution for that? How do you slow it down? <laughs> that, that's a tough one. I think that you need the support of, if, if you're talking about in an organization, you need the support of the organization. I think that it's, it's one of those things where if you invest a little more time in the thinking process, you can come to conclusions that are a lot better. You know, I, the old saying, if you don't have time to do it right, when will you have time to do it over? Mm. And, and the, the rush that we see where organizations put out products that aren't very good quality, uh, and then they have to repair them, things like that. Well, what about uh, the fact that many of us seem to have uh, declining attention spans? Where does that come into play here? I think it's, it's probably an overload. In, despite the, the abilities of our, of our filters, I think it's, it's still an, uh, an information overload. So there it's, it's more a case of being consciously selective of what it is we're going to pay attention to and just recognizing the fact that we can't all be experts about everything and, uh, and consciously picking what it is that we want to do or we want to specialize in. If there's one thing that, uh, whether it's a company or an individual who reads your book, if there's one thing you hope they, they come away from it with, what is it? It's an awareness of the filters. Because the awareness that we do this automatically and most of the time not consciously. Because what I found is when I tell people about this and when they recognize this, they go, oh yeah, you know what? I do that. And one of the challenges with this is that uh, when we're stressed, we tend to get, psychological studies have proven, we tend to get more ingrained in our filters. You know, you can't find your keys, you keep looking in the same place. Mm -hmm. And if anybody wants to um, follow up, get more information, you have a website, right? Right, and the website is uh, www.thinkingforresults.com. And you'll update that with all your articles, latest articles right, on the subject, articles as well as the book, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. We're speaking with Randy Parks, author of Thinking for Results. Next on the program, are your kids getting the best health care possible? We'll be back with more right after this short break.